for those at Bodong and University, thank you so much for hosting me. I have arrived in Delhi safely, and I hope to see you again soon. I'm here with Jawa Haolau Nauru University to give a talk about light sails. Light sails use the proposed momentum of photons, despite photons not having any mass, in order to propel themselves at almost relativistic speed. Some of the fastest ones could even go up to 5% of the speed of light. Crazy, right? So, I talk about their mo uh, their methods of motion today at Jawaharlal, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Check out my talk soon. What is your future course of action to popular maths and science around the world? Um, I just uh, am going to try to visit universities like these uh, in the future in order to further uh, people's love of math and science as well as spread uh, my love of math online. And what is the message to the young generations for popularizing this uh, science and maths? I think we, uh, math and science is very important in our modern world. If you want to know what's going on behind the scenes, so you should learn it uh, as quickly as possible. How do you feel to visit this world? And this is your maiden visit. So, what is your feeling? It's a great place. It's very beautiful. Uh, it's an extremely unique culture, and I'm so excited to be here. What suggestion do you suggest to the younger youngsters that uh, like uh, you to become as a youngest professor in the world? Uh, I hope that others will try pursuing math and science and uh, approach math uh, in a caring way uh, by uh, looking at the details instead of skipping over everything. Uh, is this your first time to visit in India? No. In notice? Yes. Then, uh, how do you feel that you have arrived in Borland University and interaction with the professors from many colleges and students? How do you feel? Uh, it was a great interaction, and I'm so uh, I'm so honored to be here at Bodoland University and to be able to talk to so many professors. How many years it will be take uh, to compare India with America? Um, how many years it will be take as India? I don't really know how exactly to answer that question. Justin, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, ask any program or we will take you to this. How did you become uh, like a professor of uh, mathematics and then uh, this is science stuff? Through uh, popularization of my math and science, I talk more about it than zero. Yeah, uh, myself, Dr. Solat Borgeri. I, uh, my question is very simple to you. Uh, is uh, area and volume, these are very crucial to measure it. So what method you suggest to measure any kind of the area and the volume? Well, I mean, area and volume, they're very established concepts. I guess you can just use integrals. Uh, usually those will get you around finding the area and volume, 2D and 3D. Even curved objects. Thank you, sir. So, we are going to have uh, some... It's not quite infinitely small. It's just very, very small on the scale of a micrometer or so. So, it's not actually uh, anything infinite because something infinite would just be a pointed space. That would be uh, incredibly hard to imagine. What would a point in space look like? How would it even have a gravitational effect? And um, it being infinitely small would make it have an almost infinite gravitational
evil effect, if I'm not wrong, which would be extremely bad for the universe in general. So I'm pretty sure that a singularity, at least in terms of a black hole and not in terms of a literal singularity, is not actually infinitely small. I hope that answered the question. Hello, uh, Mr. Bari. Welcome to Boroland. Myself, uh, Shekhar Jyoti Pathak. I am assistant professor at Vineshya Brahma Engineering College and also a research scholar in IIT Guwahati. So my question is like, uh, while doing research work, we use different types of softwares like S Pen, MATLAB and so on. So for solving different problems, we used to give input to those softwares and by doing some coding through mathematical solution, they give us the answers. So till date, uh, have you encountered people asking you about those complex mathematical simulation part like how it can be made easy or like in publishing way like is it possible to simplify those things because as a research scholars we are finding it difficult like sometimes we understand how it is working but sometimes it is very difficult to understand how mathematical simulation is going on through softwares so what is your point of view in that case? I don't work with um, a Mathematica or MATLAB. I work with uh, a much, uh, I work with somewhat simpler s uh, softwares. My brother does work with MATLAB and it does look somewhat complicated. I'm sure that if you have a strong background in uh, coding, then uh, you'll be able to have a better grasp on it. I don't know especially what to recommend in this case because I have not used uh, MATLAB or Mathematica to any real extent. I'm sorry. So can we expect Mr. Barry to work on it so that it can make positive sense in research work field? Like, uh, if is it possible for you to think of solving so those complexes in mathematics? and getting some simplified solutions that can be easier for people like us to do those particular research works? Well, as far as I know, MATLAB is just uh, for the hard computations. And uh, for the hard computations means that it's basically just a calculator that does uh, advanced work, like takes the integral of a strange function or finds the value of a specific point at a specific location. So uh, I'm not a human calculator and I don't think there are any better softwares right now than things like MATLAB. So I think you're stuck with softwares like those and uh, we have to learn how to get used to them instead of longing for a simpler solution because sometimes there is no solution like that. Uh, thank you. So My question, as you are so interested in math and physics, so do you believe in God? If you do so, then how do you connect God with science? Wait. This side. Um, okay, so uh, whether you believe in a God or you don't, uh, I uh, don't want to disclose my personal beliefs. Uh, because, I mean, I uh, don't want disagreement to uh, fester, uh, but I guess if you believe in God, there is not much uh, scientific evidence to prove it, but, uh, but sometimes faith is enough. Uh, that's what I'll keep it to. That's what I'll Thank you, to. sir. So this is will be the last question from him. Myself, Abdul Wahid Barbuya from Bineshwar Brahma in Engineering College. So my question is that, what makes you so much interest in physics and maths? What makes you so much interest? Well, my, my dad, because he was a student in math and physics at that time. Uh, you can show my dad on camera. Uh, who's the camera? Hello. Okay. So, uh, he was the one who inspired me to do math and physics. If he was a humanities student, I would be doing history.
chemistry right now. If he was a chemistry student, I'd be doing chemistry. If he was a literature student, maybe I would be a poet right now. I probably certainly wouldn't be here. But uh, his uh, inspiration uh, was what led me to do math and science. And I guess that's what led me to be here because math and science is viewed as the most unusual or the hardest of uh, the school subjects. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, participants from different colleges and different institutions for coming and interacting. And I think we could have continued, but we are running uh, short of time. And uh, we have been instructed.